Virginia City, folks. Right on schedule. Yeah, next time, I'd just soon be late. Well, I'm sorry if the ride was a little bit rough on you. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Well, I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. <laughs> Let's get them bags down here, sir. You got a package for me, Charlie? Oh, howdy. No, I can't say it's a do, Joe. We're supposed to be on at 2 o'clock. Where, from San Francisco? Yeah. Oh, well, that's it, then. I mean, we missed our connection to three for us. You'll be on at 6 o'clock, though. You sure it's going to be on at 6 o'clock? Oh, yeah, got to be. Because if it ain't, we won't be here no more. I think of that old Charlie. You can always depend on him to give you a straight answer. Yeah, pardon me. Could you tell me where the Virginia City Hotel is? Oh, yeah. It's right up the end of the street. You can't miss it. Thank you. Hey, well, you got four hot hours to kill. Come on. I'll buy you beer. Sounds good to me. Feel better? Yes, the bath was fine. You're all dressed. Are you going out? Yeah, I thought I'd uh, look around town for a bit. Hey, is there something wrong with that? I've been cooped up in that stage for a week. I just want to get out for a while. <laughs> I just asked if you were going out. Well, I am. Why are you taking the money with you? Look, we've been through all this before. I'm not going to do anything. I'm, I'm just going to take it down to the bank. It'd be a lot safer there than letting it hang around here, don't you think? All right, then. Stop worrying. We came out here to get a fresh start. Everything's in the past. I've changed. <laughs> You've got to change, too. You've got to trust me. I'll be back soon. And if you're a good girl, I'll bring you back a surprise. Well, well, 
Three nines for the dealer. Gentlemen, the price of poker just went up to $500. You wreck me. I'm still in. Last card. Three nines, bet a thousand. I'll see you. I'd raise you 1400 Could just be that you have a third jack facing the table. There's only one way to find out. You're right. But it uh, doesn't really matter. But you see, I have the fourth nine. Your deal, Mr. Harper. Uh, that's all the money I have with me. I'll have to make out a marker for... No markers, Mr. Harper. We play for cash. You have to give me a chance to break even. Harper, I don't have to give you anything. Deal passes to you, old-timer. No! Oh. All right, leave him alone. Stay out of this. Look, you stuck it on him once, that's enough. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you lying there. Hey, you all right? Come on, come here. Check me out, Joe. Take it easy on me. I just said this was his room. Bring him in. You can put him in there. Just take it easy. Yeah, there was a fight. He didn't get hurt real bad. He just needs to sleep it off. I know. He drinks more than he fights. I see you managed to get all of his money. What? I should thank you. You're the first one who ever bothered to bring him home. Or did you think there might be a little something left? If you thought that you're wrong, there's nothing left. There never is. Look, lady, I didn't come here to find out about any money, and I didn't take the money he had with him. He got in a card game he shouldn't have. I just brought him home, that's all. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Thank you for bringing him home. No need, I guess we both lost our tempers. I didn't have any right to bite your head off either. Friends? Friends. Uh, Doc Martin's a good man if your husband's hurting when he wakes up. He's my brother. Oh. Doc's the best in town. I'll remember that. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright, Joe Cartwright. Alice Harper. I guess I better be going. Bye. Goodbye. All right, fellas, let's clean it up. Hey, right, you're really moving along, huh? You said you went the logging road dead in a hurry. That's the way we're doing it. Where's Joe? Uh, right down through the trees, planting some more dynamite. Ah. Well, I'll look in on him. I'll be back to give you a hand. All right, we'll be there. How's it going, Joe? Yeah, we're going pretty good so far. Got all the easy stuff out of the way. A lot of heavy stuff to clear the rest of the way down. Uh, yeah. We're gonna need some more dynamite pretty soon. Mm. Uh, this letter came for you. Oh, thanks. I'll send Will into town for it. You know, you ought to have to go deeper with that charges. I'll be darned. Yeah, I'd say about 18 inches deeper, and I'd probably have to double the charge, too. No reason to go and do that. Oh, yes, there is. They're going to move the stump out of here. Joe? Joseph? Hmm? I was saying you're going to have a problem moving the stump out of here. No, no, I won't have any problem. I'll 
Yes. Leave them about 18 inches and double the charges. That would have been an idea. I'll have Will bring the dynamite out of here as quick as we can make it. Uh, no, I'll, I'll do it. I'll get it. I want to make sure it's right. Oh. You'll suit yourself. See you at supper. See you at supper. May I help you? Hmm? I said, may I help you? Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I'd like to buy just a little present for a friend. A very close friend, I take it. Oh, no, no. So what, what I want is something more like a, a hat. I'd like to buy a hat. I see. Uh, Miss Harper will help you. She's in charge of the hat department. Thank you. The hat department is over here. Oh. We'll be right with you. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. Pleasure to see you. It's nice to see you. I want to thank you for your thank you note. Oh, well, it was the least I could do. My brother told me everything that happened. Well, I understand that you want to buy a hat. We just have a new shipment in from St. Louis. I love this one. I think it's really lovely. What do you think? It was nice. I, well, I, I don't know too much about hats. I know what you mean. It's not the easiest thing to pick out for a woman without her trying it on, I mean. Well, perhaps you'd like to consider something else from Mrs. Cartwright. A shawl there is no Mrs. Cartwright. Oh, well. See, I, I really didn't want to buy anything. I... Uh... I just came in to thank you for the thank you note and ask you if you'd have dinner with me tonight. I'd like that. How's eight o'clock? Eight's fine. I'll see you at eight. See you at eight. That's funny, little sister. I thought I was late. <laughs> I lost the key. <laughs> you look very nice. You, you always look very nice. John, you told me you were going to look for a job. Well, I lied. But I always do, don't I? You always look very nice. And I always lie. And I always forgive you. I can't, John. I can't take care of you anymore. I'm sorry. I had a few drinks, but I'll get a job tomorrow. I promise. I don't care what you do tomorrow. I want you out of here tonight. I'm not going to be like Mother John. I'm not going to spend my life making excuses for you and die listening to your promises. I'm moving into a single room in the morning. I expect you to be gone by then. Hi. You ready? Goodbye, John. I guess I wasn't hungry. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I... I shouldn't have come over to the store. I, I kind of... 
put you on the spot when I asked you to go out with me. I oh, know. No, I'm... I'm glad you did. I wanted... It has nothing to do with you. You sure? I'm sure. Well, if it has nothing to do with me and you really wanted to go out with me, then why are you messing up my evening? I mean, really. You know, it took an awful lot of nerve for me to go in that store with all those women and ask you to go out with me. They're all looking at me. What's so funny? I don't know. You just made me laugh. Well, I'd rather not know why you're laughing than know why you're crying. All right, then we go. Where do we go? But there's only one place that a man takes a woman on a night like this. Where's that? To the bar. I don't believe that. Well, it's true. I crossed my heart when Annie was a kid. He ate bugs. All kinds of bugs. Certainly didn't hurt his fiddle playing any. Well, it never hurt anything Annie ever did. I remember when we were kids, we used to sit around and watch him eat these bugs, you know, and bees. He couldn't get enough of bees. No, really, we, we'd sit around and watch him eat these bugs and figure he was going to die, you know. When he got a little bit older, he could run faster and jump farther than anybody else in Virginia City. They would all sit around and figure we should eat eaten bugs when we were little. I don't know. I really don't know when to believe you. Now, you can always believe me. I may not always be telling the truth, but you can always believe me. Thank you. I had a wonderful time. Yeah, same here. Look, I'll um, walk you up to your room if you want. No, thank you. I'm fine. Okay. Thank you again. I really had a good time. Well, it, was, it was my pleasure. Good night. Uh, can I see you again? Yes. It's tomorrow too soon. No. What time to get off work? I'm off tomorrow. It's Sunday. Oh, I forgot. All right, well, then let me uh, let me pick you up early. Say two o'clock. Fine. I'll, I'll see you too then.
Did you have a good time? Now, don't worry. I'm all packed. I'm going to Carson City. I just want to say goodbye. Goodbye. I'm sorry. I told you, John, it's not going to work this time. That's not why I'm saying this. I know that I've made a mess of my life so far. I've hurt a lot of people. And you're right to send me away. It is for my own good. And if I ever want to make it, it'll have to be on my own. Be happy. You're really happy you took me for a ride today. Then nothing but tell you my troubles. <laughs> don't be silly. You didn't hear me complain, did you? Well, I don't think I've been quiet long enough to give you a chance. I'm a good listener. Right. Anyway, no more. Joe Cartwright, I promise I will not spoil your day. Alice Harper, the only thing that could spoil my day would be not having you with me. Beautiful. That's my favorite place. Brother Haas and I used to come here when we were kids. We didn't do anything special. We just sit and look at it. We used to call it our happy place. You really loved him, didn't you? I think everybody did. He was that kind of guy. Do you know I spent my whole life in the city dreaming of a place like this? Somewhere quiet, clean. I'm glad you didn't stay in the city. Some, uh, some stew in the kitchen. No, oh, thanks. We had dinner in town. Dinner? Uh, dinner? Two nights in a row? Sounds like he's getting serious. Uh-huh. Well, I better be serious. 
I'm gonna ask that girl to marry me. I'll see you in the morning. Joe, I never seen anything like you. You ain't getting married for four more weeks. You're running around here like it's tomorrow afternoon. I just want to get the house ready on time, if you don't mind. But if you get it finished too soon, you ain't gonna have anything to do but sit around and get panicky. Yeah, for your information, I'm not even nervous. Oh, yeah? Then how come you're nailing your fingers to the roof? <laughs> yeah, well, you keep your mind on your work and never mind the jokes, little brother. <laughs> hey, it looks like you got company. You keep working. Hey, Joe, don't take too long now. I want to make sure this place gets ready on time. You just keep working like I told you. They're going to be all right, those two. Yes, sir, they're going to be all right. Hey, Jack, I buy another one. You're getting down kind of early, ain't you, Mr. Harper? Celebrate, Jack. Celebrate. My sister's getting married today over in Virginia City. How come you didn't make the wedding? <laughs> I guess I just wasn't up to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yes, I, why spoil her day? You know what I told her I was uh, doing? I wrote her that I was working on a big land deal. And I couldn't get away. Dear little sister, I told you I'd make it on my own, and I have. I'm at work on a big land deal, and I'm sorry, but I just can't make the wedding. Congratulations.
Mister. Hey, Jamie, give me a hand with this tie, will you? For some reason, I just can't get this darn thing tied. I thought you said you weren't nervous. Well, I lied. Just see if you can get it tied. All right. Is Pa ready yet? Only since sunrise. Hey, what, what time is it? Well, Joseph, it's a, it's time. It's time. All right, let's go. gathered here today to bring these two people together in holy matrimony. A whole new life will begin for the two of you today. A life of sharing not just the joys, but the sorrows too. It won't always be easy. Life never is. You have to work at it and work hard. But you will find that there is great strength in love. Do you, Alice Harper, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband, to love, honor, and cherish till death do you part? I do. And do you, Joe Cartwright, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife, to love, honor, and cherish till death do you part? I do. Now repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. It's beautiful.
forever. It's late. I've been here since 8 o'clock this morning. So have I. Well, that's your problem, not mine. Now, let's go. How true. How very true. It is my problem. And I must... Work it out on my own. Hey. You know it's getting late. No, I'm almost done. Your pa said supper at six. We've been late the last three times. Well, whose fault is that? Never you mind. You're just going to move on, okay? Hey, well, I'm all ready. I thought you were worried about being late. I've been waiting for you to button me up. Typical husband you are. You've only seen me in it ten times. Well, it's so darn tight, I can hardly hook it up. Really? Mm-hmm. This material shrinks sometimes. There, we got it. Well, I must say tight or not, you look very lovely. Joe. Joe, hook up the buggy. Yeah. Yeah, let's get the buggy ready, Joe. Mr. Harper, we've been waiting for you. Mr. Damien wants his money. I'll have it in a few days. I told you. Mr. Damien's getting impatient. Now we're asking nice this time. 48 hours from now, we won't be asking so nice. You understand? 48 hours, Mr. Harper. 
I understand. Don't you ever stop? Not unless I have to. I swear you worked harder the last few months you've been married than all the years you worked at Ponderosa. That's because I don't have candy there holding me back all the time. And I'll remember that next time you need some help or something. <laughs> we passed Alice on the road away back. Why don't you come home for lunch? I should pack my lunch. Well, you said it was important. Oh, she's fixing you something special. You're a married man now. You gotta do what your wife tells you. Yeah. Well, for your information, I was gonna quit after I finished taking this hole anyway. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. Come on, Jim. Take care, Bob. Alice? In the kitchen.
fight. He didn't get hurt real bad. He just needs to sleep it off. I know. He drinks more than he fights. I see you managed to get all of his money. Look, lady, I didn't come here to find out about any money, and I didn't take the money he had with him. He got in a card game he shouldn't have. I just brought him home, that's all. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Thank you for bringing him home. Friends? Friends. My favorite place. Brother Hoss and I used to come here when we were kids. We didn't do anything special. We just sit and look at it. We used to call it our happy place. You really loved him, didn't you? Nice night for a walk, isn't it, John? Isn't it, John? You disappoint me, John. You really do. I trusted you. You owe me money, a great deal of money. You promised to pay me, and you haven't. Da Damien, I will pay you. I just need a few more days. I told you. I know what you told me. You told me you had a bank craft coming in from... St. Louis. Yes, yes, I do. And it'll be here in just a few days. There is no bank draft, is there, John? Yes, there. I swear there is. Lying is a sin, John. A man must pay for his sins. Hadley? No, 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 please, please. I, I, please. All right. All right. I lied. I'm sorry. I was scared. I, I thought that my luck would change, that I could win some of the money back. I let you play on credit, and you've never really meant to pay me. That's not true. I will pay you. I'll get the money somewhere. Where? I don't know. That's not good enough. Hadley. No, wait, wait. My sister, she's got the money. She got married three, four months ago to a fellow that's got plenty. She'll give it to me. Five thousand is a lot of money. Her husband's got it. His father owns a big spread. His name's Cartwright. Believe me, he's got plenty of money.
I suppose you wonder what I'm doing. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you anyway. I was, see, I was putting the cradle in different places around the room to see where the baby would get a lot of sun and have a nice view at the same time. Uh, well, um, why don't you put it right in the center? See, then the baby can look straight up. Because if you keep pulling around with the cradle, this room is never going to get a roof on it. Is, is it big enough? The room? The room, yeah, is it big enough? Plenty big. I can make it a lot bigger. No, I think it's perfect. Suppose you have twin. Would you not say that? <laughs> I'm gonna have plenty of trouble just taking care of one at a time, thank you. Very much. You're welcome, mm -hmm. very much. I think two using these wouldn't be too bad, though, would it? We're going to have as many use and as you want. Okay? Right now, I think we ought to get the first room finished. Finished. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to go over to the closet and get some more lumber. Say hello for me. Will do. Oh, see if the family wants to have supper with us. We've got plenty. I will. I love you. some good supper. No point in rushing it. You got to let Hobson get that pie finished. You know how he's going to feel if we go off and leave it. Yeah, I know what you mean. Say, hey, uh, what's it uh, feel like knowing you're going to be a papa? I tell you, he gets nervous. He can't sleep at night. You know? Well, let baby's born. He's never going to let you sleep. <laughs> I don't think you understand how serious this situation really is. I understand exactly how serious it is for you. I hardly think you're in any position to threaten me. Not if you care about your brother. He really has some very fine qualities, you know. I would advise you to leave my brother right here and take your friends and go. My husband and his family will be here any minute, and I don't think they'll take too kindly to your being here. What a shame. I had hoped we could be such good friends. Look what I found. look quite good. I don't know if it covers the full amount owed to me. But it's better than nothing. Give me back the box. Get out of my house. Give me back the box. Get out of my house. I'll only ask you one more time. And then I'll have to let Mr. Hanley take it from you. Don't touch it!
talking now. Nope. No way to tell how it started, Clem. Could have been the stove. More than likely was. Yeah. I never did see a fire burn any hotter than this one. Sheriff, take a look over here. What's left of one? I wonder who it is. Well, there's no way to tell. You better wrap it up and put it in the wagon with, with the woman, then head back to town. We know, oh God, that you will welcome Alice Cartwright to your kingdom with open arms. And we pray that. With that knowledge, her husband and her loved ones will find comfort. Help them, O oh Lord, to forget this tragedy and to remember only the beauty and the love that was Alice Cartwright. Amen. Always welcome to our house. It's getting kind of late. I was just wondering where you were. Oh, Pa, always worrying. No, I, I wasn't worried. Oh, no, come on now, come on. You were worrying. Well, there's nothing to worry about you. Heard the preacher today. is in heaven and you think about the good times. and mine and our babies. I, ne I never got the baby's room finished, you know. I thought it was too sm small, but I told Alice I could make it bigger. Plenty big.
That's what you're all set. hear from you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I'm where I'm just gonna keep moving. Just need a little time. And help. Take care. I have a beer with. You settled for whiskey? Beer went skunky on me. Yeah, whiskey be fine. <sighs> Looks like you've been on the trail for a while. Yeah, I don't mind. Well, I don't know stable said he had rooms to rent. Well, sure do. Ain't the greatest, but the beds are sleepable. That's fine. Let's see. Six. End of the hall. That's 25 cents for the room and 50 cents for the whiskey. Keep the change. Get it. Sleep good.
Where did you get that music box? Listen, mister, you get out of here. Where did you get it? Where did you get it? It's mine. You get out of here. Now you hold on. Get out of here. He was a little fella. He... He talked real proper, real fancy. What was his name? Damien. Damien, that was it. His last name? I, I don't know. His friends just called him Damien. I don't know. Hank! Just three fellas he had with him. I don't know. One of them was big and mean looking. Never said anything. This this Damien did all the talking. How long ago did they leave? A couple of weeks. They stayed in town for a while gambling. Cleaned everybody out. Mentioned something about working their way to Frisco. I don't know anymore. I swear it. Horses are saddled. Joe, let, let me go with you. No, I want you to ride into town. Tell Clem what happened. Have more of the law in San Francisco. They can notify the jewelry stores to keep an eye out for the necklace. It'll be our only lead if they beat us to Frisco. All right. Kenny and I'll check every little town on the way. Let's go. Better wire your Paul in Carson City, too. All right. Should I tell him to try to catch up with you? No, not enough time. Just tell him. Tell him we'll get him.
Yeah, what's the next town? Uh, Haskell. How far? Well, we, um, we ought to make it by nightfall. Yes, Daddy. Say We're hi, We're going to have to rest the horses a while on the way. After that, we've got just a few more towns for Frisco. Barlow, Thornton. It means we're going to have to add that room on a little sooner than we planned to. We better get going. Excellent. A pleasant surprise in such plebeian surroundings. I want to get out of this place. It's driving me nuts. There's nothing to do around here. I say when we can go. Well, I wish you'd hurry up and decide. I don't hurry anything! That's what I like about Mr. Hanley here. He doesn't hurry either. He enjoys every moment. Savors it. Like you would a fine wine. You've angered me, Slow. I think you ought to be more like Mr. Hanley. Hanley. Cut out his tongue. Come on, you gotta be joking. I thought you knew me far better than that. Now, wait a minute, I... I didn't mean nothing by that, I'm sorry. Hey, look, I said I was sorry. Look, call him off, will you? Don't call him! Please! You ought to be forgiven! Yeah. You kneel when you ask for forgiveness. Come forward. Yes, Sloan. Please, forgive me. was forgiven.
been about an hour. Horses ought to be rested by now. I'll get him saddled up. One dollar a night for two. Extra 50 cents if you want a bath. We don't need a room. We're looking for some men. There's four of them. One's named Damien. Mr. Damien, you friends of his? And he's here? Was here. Wonderful man, real gentleman. How long ago did they leave? Four, maybe five hours ago. Left me a five dollar tip. It's gonna be tough tracking at night. We'll need torches. We'll need some fresh horses too. Where's the livery? Why are you looking for him? Where's the livery? All the way up the north end of the street. He wouldn't do nothing wrong. I told you, he's a gentleman. Who they could be. Well, it doesn't matter. How far behind us would you say they are? Two, maybe three hours at the pace they're going. It'll be daylight in three hours. Mr. Hanley and I will go on ahead until we find some fresh water. You two stay behind and kill them. I've seen him before. There's one thing for sure. I'm never gonna see him again. I'm all right. You don't want any 
up like your friend over there, you're going to talk. Oh, I, I don't want no part of this. Look, I, I didn't mean you any harm. I don't even know you! You know my wife. Take yourself! Your wife? My house. My wife. You burned my house. No, that wasn't me. That was Damien and Hanley. They done it. Look, I, I was there, but I, I didn't have nothing to do with it. Damien, he let Hanley kill her. And then they burned her house. That's the truth. Where are they? They rode on ahead to look for water. We're supposed to meet them there. Stay with him. Hanley! I don't like it. I thought they would have been here by now. If anything's gone wrong, those two will still be following us. I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like that at all. Build a fire. We'll be ready if company come. where I can see him. Whatever you're saying. That means you too. I'm afraid that won't do any good. There's no one under that blanket. Mr. Hanley! Did he ride in alone? I could have had Mr. Hanley kill you right away. But I'd like to know why I'm being followed. It makes me very uneasy not knowing why. You killed my wife. Why? Oh, yes. It must be Carvite. But how did you connect us? We burned all the evidence. Not the music box. Music box. That's right. Now, that was stupid of me, I must admit. But no one's perfect. You see, women happen to be my only vice. Now, you take Mr. Hanley here. He doesn't have that problem. He has a much different way of dealing with women. I'm afraid your wife was an example. Mr. Hanley, give me the rifle. Well, you and Mr. Cartwright have something to settle. You did kill his wife. And since we have no judge or jury here, I think the fairest way is through trial by combat. Let the trial begin, Mr. Hadley.
to the dead! Kill him! Disappoint me, Cole, right? The Bible says an eye for an eye. You should have killed him. You had the right. I'll give you one more chance. So big.
came just as soon as I got the wire. Saying you'd be released today, so I'm late. I'm just wondering why you bothered. Well, Mike came to see me last year. Maybe he promised I'd bring you home in one piece. You think you can do that, Ben? I think you'd be ready to go home. Ben. I owed you that. You promised me a fair trial. I didn't get it. Now I owe you one. You ready to go now? I'm ready to start, then. This is Mr. Dundee. Hello, sir. How are you, Jamie? John, let me put your horse up. Expecting a dry season, man? I can never tell. We'll be ready for it if it comes. <laughs> I'm getting so I can lay in those rocks just as fast as they can. Oh, well, listen to him. You are, huh? All right, son, let's see how fast you are. Come on. Stand there, get back to work. <laughs> Where's the new man? With Jamie after some trout for our breakfast. Sure, he's taking a shine to him, hasn't he? How long is he staying? That'll give him a few days. We'll get a little confidence back. But I don't think he's suffering from the lack of that. Still got to deliver him? I made a promise. I think one of us ought to go with him. As long as we get home and decide to get even with folks, you're going to be right in the middle. He hasn't said anything to indicate he's looking for trouble. That's the point. He hasn't said anything. I think he's already decided what he's going to do, and I don't think it's friendly. Is that why you're riding such tight hurt on me? I'll tell you what, Ben. Why don't you just advance me enough money to get my wife a nice little coming home present? And I'll be on my way. Why should I do that? Well, that would save you a nice long trip, wouldn't it? I promised your wife I was going to deliver you, and I'm going to keep that promise. What about the loan? No loan. But I'll give you a chance to earn what you need. People who call me a hardhead just don't know him, do they?
rock slipped right onto my hands, Joe. Yeah, onto my foot. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's busted? No, just bruised a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, old buddy. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's not your fault. It's Dundee's. We're lucky we don't have broken backs. He's still at it. Going like a steam engine. Somebody tell him it's not a race. We're not trying to prove anything. I don't know. Maybe he is. You got $18 coming to you. That's about twice a regular week's pay, isn't it? Don't do me any favors, Ben. A man does the work of two men, he gets double wages. All right, that kind of talk makes sense. You're tagging along the rest of the way. That doesn't make sense, though. Nobody asked you. I suppose it wouldn't do any good to ask you for the loan of a gun, either way. That's right, it wouldn't do any good. You take care, huh? Yes, sir, Mr. Dundee. I hope I see you again one of these days. One of these days. Well, finish up as soon as you can. We'll see you next week. You're not back by then. We're going to come looking for you. Take care, Pa. That's what it's like being on the outside. What did happen that night? Just exactly what I said at the trial. And I'd never seen before picked a fight with me. And you killed him. Well, worst anybody can say is it was a fair fight. Well, the judge didn't think so. Neither the sheriff. Yeah, the sheriff was a friend of his. Whose friend are you, Ben? I've known Meg since she was knee high to a grasshopper. And father and I were friends years before that. Uh, I guess that answers my question. send someone to get him back home, making sure that his wild temper doesn't get him into trouble again. Figure that woman has uh, done her bit, too. Now it's my time. Isn't it? We only had three months together. Did you know that, Ben? Yeah, I knew that. I wonder how she's going to take to me now. Changed. I wonder if she's changed. Hey, you know, we got a long, hard ride ahead of us. Be a real favor if you just shut up and let us both get a little shut eye. Huh? the town. We don't have to ride through it. No, I got some business here. Watch it. What kind of business? I got to buy a present for my wife, remember?
see many friendly faces, Ben? Welcome home, John Dundee. Hello, Mr. Sanctuary. Uh, Mr. Dundee. Yeah, I thought I'd uh, buy Meg a little present, Mr. Sanctuary. Oh, sure. Sure, Mr. Dundee, sure. Here. Here's some very nice things. Yes, sir, they are. These combs now, they're imported. Mm -hmm. uh, what about that shawl over there, Mr. Sangster? Well, uh, why... Uh, oh, that's a real beauty. Yeah. Art Fancher's wife's been wanting that for a long time. Oh, and Art Fancher's I... wife wants that. How much is it? Well, seeing as it's imported, and uh, I guess maybe... Uh, Four dollars? All right, I'll take it. Mr. Sanction. One of those. And one of those. Yes, sir. It's a pleasure doing business with you again. Thank you. No, it's it? No, one more stop. You got your present? <laughs> no, but I want a bath, Ben, with plenty of hot water and soap. I'm going home in style. right through us. Well, what'd you expect him to do? Get off his horse and kiss you?
Not here. I didn't expect you for another day or two. I mean, there was no way of knowing just when you'd get here. Meg, uh, thank you. <laughs> what am I doing? You always have beautiful hands, Meg. I've tried to keep busy. I... I guess working around the place doesn't keep my hands ladylike. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah. Fixing plows and rebuilding barns kind of makes for calluses and blisters, then. I tried to keep busy. I think I'll just have another look around the place. And you've been with him for a while now. Has he changed? Well, he's still... He's still angry inside, if that's what you mean, now, Meg. Meg, when you came and asked me to bring him here, why didn't you tell me you were doing all the work? Before John went away, he made certain arrangements, and they just never worked out, that's all. What kind of arrangements? With his business partners in town. Uh, Bartlett and Pancher, fellows that were at the trial. They said that they'd look after the ranch and try to keep things up until he got back. And... Yeah. This is all he needs. Meg, why didn't you come to me? No. Oh, Meg. Meg, you know what? You, you two need time alone together to get reacquainted. Then you're not leaving. Of course I am. I brought him here, just as you asked me to. Oh, please, Ben, don't go. Meg, what's the matter? I don't want to be alone with him. He's your husband. Ben, I'm afraid of him. <sighs> Welcome home, John Dundee. What do you mean? So I'll stay on for a few days if you want me to. Let me go. Go out and see if I can get my hand. Yeah, 
You know, folks around here weren't too happy when Meg chose me for a husband because they figured that my bad temper had always got me into trouble and always would get me into trouble. They figured she was just buying her share. Yeah, you went out and proved them right. Look, Ben, you've been her friend for a long time. I figure that gives you a right to say that. But I cut this farm right out of the raw dirt, and I did it for her. Yeah, I know. Meg told me about your friends and the promise they made. We'll see she suffers no want. That's what they said. What kind of business were you in? Oh, we pooled our money. We bought our horses. Then when the price was up, we sold them to the Army. You have papers and all that sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah, we had partnership agreements and contracts when we sold the stock. Ben, her hands were as white as snow when I married her. There wasn't a mark on them. Not when I left here. We'll see, she suffers no want. That's what they said. That's what they said. That's not the answer you know. This isn't your affair anymore. You've done your good deed. Now we're quits. Not quite. Meg asked me to stay. What for? She wants me to. I'm telling you to stay out of it. I know how you're feeling. Maybe I feel a bit that way myself. That gun's brand new. You've had revenge in mind long before you ever saw Meg's hands. I owe you one, remember? I saw that. Storekeeper walking on eggs, I thought was respect. He was just plain scared. I'll have the gun. You're on parole. You walk off this range with a gun. Those fellows in town will shoot you full of holes or put you in prison and throw away the key. What I got in mind just might be worth it. Now give me the gun. What about Meg? Yes, John. What about me? Do I have anything to say about what's left of my life, or do you claim that privilege too? <laughs> Get it, chum. Uh, we were in town. I just bought it. That was thoughtful of you. I want you to have something. Thank you. Are you going to open it? into my life and into my bedroom after five years. And you hand me a present and that's all there is to it. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? I'm talking about five years of waiting and working and, and doing without things. And five years of sleeping alone and crying in the night. Well, what do you think I was doing, Meg? for something you did, John. Meg, you're my wife. You married me. That makes you my wife. All right, I am your wife. and I waited for you, and I, I worked for you all these years. And Now you're going to have to do the same thing. You're, you're going to have to prove that, that you're able to be a good husband. Hold on, are you telling me I haven't got any rights in my own bedroom? Why not till you earn them? Just how am I supposed to do that? By, by courting me all over again. By, by just like you did before we were married. Well, where am I supposed to sleep in the meantime? Anywhere but in here. Mm. 
If you want anything, ma'am, I'll be out in the barn with the rest of the animals. like that there's something eating him inside i've seen it before meg do you really think i should stay on i mean it should be between just the two of you if you leave ben so do i all right as soon as i telegraph the boys i'll be staying on for a couple of more days i'll be back Telegrapher? Only one in town. Well, I'd like you to send this message to me, please. Virginia City, huh? Yep. Ben Cartwright. Haven't I seen you before? Maybe. Yeah. You rode in with John Dundee yesterday. That's right. How much will that be? Fifty cents. Yeah, thank you. And then do you have any friends in this town? You ever try to cozy up to a grizzly bear, Mr. Cartwright? You, uh, you rode in with John Dundee. Yeah. You know him pretty well, do you? About five years. I was at the trial. Well, then you know he's got a temper like a scalded bobcat. He proved that in that uh, fist fight. Yeah, fight which he didn't start. Well, the uh, the jury thought otherwise, but that's all gone and forgotten. Yeah. I was hoping that he'd come back a changed man, but it uh, doesn't look like it. He wasn't in town an hour before he uh, bought himself a gun. No law against him having a gun? Well, I thank you for explaining the law to me. But something maybe you don't know is the conditions of his parole forbid him from wearing or carrying a gun any place except on his own property. Oh, I think he was told all that. Well, I want you to tell him something for me. If he gets in any trouble at all, he's going to go back to prison, and that is a fact. I'll tell him that. Excuse me. Uh, by the way, Sheriff, uh... Is there any law which forbids an ex-convict from defending himself? No. But it better be ironclad that it was self-defense, you understand me? Oh, yes, you've made it perfectly clear. Well, I want to make something else perfectly clear. I'm the law around here, and I'll decide what's self-defense and what isn't. Well, that's very clear as far as the first decision is concerned. Of course, uh, Sheriff, you know that you can be overruled by higher authority. Such as the uh, U.S. Marshal, the Attorney General, or the Governor. You might think about that. So they're just waiting for him to make one wrong move. Mm -hmm. Ben, what are we going to do? John have any uh, problems with his uh, with his partners before the trouble? First, it was all right. 
until he got suspicious of them. Started accusing them of juggling the accounts, of taking more than their share of the profits. How, how long before the fight was this? Has uh, John ever been known to avoid a fight ever in his life? You know the answer to that, Ben. What are you getting at? Well, suppose, uh, suppose his suspicions were, uh, were right. I mean, suppose he had enough information about those partners of his to make a lot of trouble for them, put them behind bars. Now, if you were them, what would you do with a man who had a quick temper? You mean he was set up? Well, according to John's own testimony, a man whom he'd never known, never seen in his life before, picked a fight with him. Why? To kill him? Fancher wouldn't care who got killed. It worked out fine for them either way, didn't it? I mean, I guess... That nice, fine office in town. Now they own military contracts. Everybody's making money. John, let's move away somewhere. Start over again somewhere else, please. Man and wife? Yes. Man and wife. That's a very tempting offer, Mac, if I was the kind of man who bought his wife's favorites. I didn't mean it like that. John, what are you going to do? I don't know, Ben. I don't know. I think maybe first I just better figure out what kind of a man this woman wants for her husband. John? He said he had some work to deliver at the well. Oh, he's not there, and his horse is gone, too. Uh, well. All right. Don't worry, I'll find him. It's Dundee. He's not wearing a gun. I'll handle them. Get some of the boys and stand by. Right. Hello, Art. Nice fancy layout you got here. We were wondering when you're going to get around to dropping by. Seems like you prospered somewhere. We've worked hard. Says my wife. You remember my wife, don't you, Art? Meg? Sure. Well, I'm your partner, Art. You forgot to send her my share of the profits. Profits? There weren't any for a while. Things were tight right after you went away. That partnership was a limited agreement. Had to be renewed every 90 days. You weren't here. You didn't sign, so you weren't a partner anymore. I got all the papers in the file. I can show you. Sure, sure. All legal and proper, huh? You can bet it's legal. Get a lawyer and we'll prove it. No, no, there wouldn't be any need for that. Look, Art, I, I did some figuring and I figured it all out. I figured about $1,000 for each year would be fair. Not for me, for her. Not a dime. Not ever. $5,000 tomorrow. Or you and Bartlett are going to be looking over your shoulders every day and every night because I'm coming to collect. Maybe you'd better look out in the street. Hard to take a dozen like him, and even that wouldn't keep me away from you. Now, I think it'd be better all the way around if you just sort of paid it out. You're not getting a penny out of this. $5,000 
Five thousand dollars tomorrow, Art. Tell your partner. Everybody having a good time? Join yourselves. I never raised a hand in anger, Ben. Well, Sheriff. He'll be back. He promised me that. Not if we move first, he won't. What do you want? My husband is... In the barn. Been there for an hour. Cartwright rode out early. Bedroll and canteen in his saddle. Going home. <laughs> that did it. Here he comes. The way we figured, as soon as you rode out. Where is he? His horse is still tied to the hitch rail. Well, he won't be needing it. John, where is he? He's right there. I don't make the same mistake twice, Ben. Talk to him before his friends get here, hmm? for the murder of Jim Anders. Anders? How did you know he was out here, Sheriff? Well, that don't matter. We got his body and his horse, and we got you before you could get rid of him. Uh -huh. Now put your hands up. You afraid of an unarmed man, Sheriff? Maybe you better take a look first. Is this the murdered man you're looking for? You sent him out here to be killed, didn't you, Sheriff? Then came out here to arrest Dundee for his murder. What are you talking about? Well, the judge and the governor call it complicity in attempted murder. They'll also want to look into the fight that sent Dundee to prison after they hear what Anders had to say about it. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs>
out of here. No. No, this is where I belong. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Go keep your eye on that house. Man, I think them fellas are really trying to kill us out there. I get the distinct feeling that you're right. Well, it makes it come down to self-defense, Ben. I think we ought to smoke a lot, don't you? I was just waiting for you to say that. I'll, uh, I'll cover you. Right. John! Let him get away. When you get out of this, you're going to be sorry you said that. Another one down here. Where? Over by the corral, but I don't see him. to town and see the U.S. Marshal. Higher authority, Sheriff, in case you've forgotten. Move. All right, Sonny. Hey, recruits. See you tonight.
That's enough. Go on home. Don't expect me to tell you nothing, because I can't. <laughs> Recruit. Hey, Ted. Want this apple? Pop Sing always gives me about twice as much as I can eat. <laughs> no, no thanks. I ain't hungry. Mm. Yes, sir. All the makings of a mighty good year. A good year, in case you forgot, is when you got a roof, a job, and plenty to eat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, how long have you had that job with Mr. Corbin? Two weeks and three days. <laughs> hey, you and me, we're doing all right, huh? I mean, you got the cart rights and I got a steady job. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Things is looking good. They sure are. Come on, I seen the Ponderosa. Now, let me show you my stomping ground. Oh, OK, but I can only stay a couple minutes. Heck, in another week or so, old man Corpin's going to make me a clerk. You're kidding. Yep. That's great. Up yourself. Go ahead. At Corpins, we put you to ease right off. Uh, sure it's all right? Sure, I'm sure. Heck, everybody from the mayor on down comes in here. What do you think you're doing? What's that in your hand? Mr. Corpin, we was just... Both hands, young man. Corbin. Mr. Corbin. Sir, I didn't mean nothing by it. You can take it out of my pay. It, it couldn't have been more than a couple of pennies worth. Said I was a fool, soft-hearted, soft-headed, firing on a drifter kid and a, and a thief at that. Look, Mr. Corbin, sir, I was and the one that... And the missus asked me when he was going to stick his big fist in the cash drawer. Same as over in Silver City. Mr. Corbin, that was five years ago. I was 11 years old, and all I took was enough to buy something to eat. Mr. Corpus, please, it won't happen again. True enough, young man. Always have two places to sleep. Don't never count on nothing. Hey, Ted, maybe when he thinks about it, he'll give you, you another think I care about that? Watch this. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, my good man, but I was wondering if my suite is still available. Yes, sir, Mr. Hogg. And um, how many nights are you staying here this time? Uh, hard to tell. Hard to tell. All depends on how these uh, big business deals I got work and pan out. You know how it is. Same terms as before? Same as before suits me. Well, this here's my suite. Unless, of course, he rents it to a horse. Dad, um, whatever happened to your mom and pa? Now, you don't have to say anything if you don't want to. Never laid eyes on either one of them. I have to tell you about the major. Uh, just, just parts of it. You know, he was as much like Ken as... Well, as you and the Cartwrights. <laughs> you should have seen the looks on those other kids' faces at the state home when he sent me this. Wait, I think I still got the box that come in, if you don't believe me. Oh, I believe you, Ted. How could I ever just find something like that? I mean, you can see for yourself I ain't no ordinary guy. Yeah, it's, uh, 
It's a real beauty, all right. <laughs> Jamie, I could never uh, ask nobody else a, a favor like this, but is there any chance there might be some, some work for me at the Ponderosa? You know, odd jobs. I'll do anything. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll ask my Paul. You know I do the same for you. Oh, uh... Here. We get barrels of them. Excuse. Uh, you a new hand? Oh, no. No, you know such luck, son. You know, it seems like uh, so many no's have been going my way lately. I guess they kind of scared off all the yeses. Um, he, uh, he said there wasn't any work of any kind, not even any odd jobs? No, uh, no, nothing. No, not till spring roundup. But your pa's a fine man, son. <clears throat> At least wise, I can strip. Thank you. At least I can stretch this bell out a little bit while I keep on looking. Jamie? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thanks a lot. Well, listen, we're uh, getting an early start to Tucker Falls. Anything we need to talk about before we leave? Uh, no, that's all right. Unless you want to change your mind about me going. Uh, forget it. I already tried to talk him into letting you go in my place, but... I just got this strange idea that you're just not going to get any homework done while you're on horseback. <laughs> but you're just going to have to stay here and crack the books a while. Well, I got them ready. <laughs> Take it easy, little brother. Remember to hit the books. Yeah, take care, Joe. Okay. So long, Paul. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. Don't worry about a thing. I'll look after the ranch while you're gone. Hop say look after the ranch. You look after the book. Take care. Come on. I wish they'd get it over with. You don't know how much trouble I had sneaking out tonight. What do you reckon they're gonna do to us? I don't know. <laughs> Look, Sonny, it's only an initiation. I, I don't think they could ever really hurt anybody. You don't think I'm scared, do you? If I was scared, you'd know it. Well, there's nothing wrong with being scared. Recruit, Carfry. Come forward if you are brave enough to face the true test of manhood. Wow, this is some clubhouse. Hey, man, look at the green recruit. The moment, recruit. Too bad if you're not ready. Hey, Ted. Josh, hey, what are you doing? Hey, Gorby, how you doing? Bye now. What are you doing? The recruit doesn't know about pain, about the scars we all have to show for our bravery. <laughs> uh, Ron, in case you haven't heard, running irons are against the law. You hear that, man? <laughs> Telling the vigilante raiders about the law? He thinks we're fooling. Maybe he thinks it doesn't hurt to be branded. Branded? Blindfold him. Wait a minute. Feel the heat for pain. Hey, you guys are really going to do that, are you? Hey, wait a minute. How do you think the rest of us became vigilante raiders? <laughs> Took more than a month to find you. Don't worry, recruit. You'll probably pass out. Pass out? Hey, wait a minute! Here it comes! Ah, stop it! Stop! Stop! Just 
eyes, see? You can't tell the difference. <laughs> it felt just like it. On time. <laughs> As captain of Troop One, I welcome you to the Vigilante Raiders. You're now Private Jamie. <laughs> you mean you were the leader and you didn't even tell me? Vigilante Raiders never tell their secrets to outsiders. Oh. Never. On pain of death. Oh. Uh, all right, all men. Right. Back to your places. Oh, Ted. Uh, I know this isn't the best place, but I wanted to tell you as soon as I could. There won't be any work for you at the ranch until spring. I'm sorry. Forget it. You try. Adams, better get that ice out of sight. Now, Lewis, you almost got away when you started snickering. Sit here, Jamie. All right. <laughs> How do I look? Like a genuine vigilante raider. <laughs> Recruit Bolor, come forward if you're brave enough to face the true test of manhood. Let him feel the heat. No, please, I changed my mind. Do you hear that? He doesn't want to be one of us anymore. <laughs> I do, but please, let me go. Let me go. I don't feel very good. Come on, get up. Come on, Sonny. Watch. He'll open his eyes any second now and start laughing. He's always doing something like that. Is there any water in that ice bucket? Yeah. Come on, Sonny. Now, sure. Sonny, if you don't open your eyes before I count to three, I'm going to pour this ice water all over you. <laughs> One. Two. Three. How could he have died? We all went through that same initiation. It wasn't our fault. How could we know he was gonna... Jamie? We just did the same thing, like always. You didn't. How could he? I don't know, Josh. Sonny was always kind of. Well, he never could run very fast or anything. So what? Fat Tommy can't run fast either. But the shooters stick a lot. Didn't bother him. Yeah, but Sonny always got tired pretty quick. What are we going to do? Now, look, once we go to Sheriff Coffee and tell him what we can't. What do you mean we can't? We got to, Ted. How can we keep something like this a secret? The same way we keep this club a secret. We swear. But, Ted, what, what about his... What about his mom pa? Jamie. Jamie, nothing's going to bring Sonny back. I'd take a real hot poker in the belly if we could. But if we keep our mouths shut, we don't hurt nobody. If we tell the truth, we could go to jail or even prison. We didn't mean it, Jamie. None of us would have hurt Sonny. If it was me, Jamie, I'd want it that way. I'd want my friends to be all right. That's what friends are for, ain't they? What if it happened to you? Would you want us all to go to prison? Of course not, Ted, but this... Nobody has to lie. We just... We just keep quiet a few days. They'll find them. And the whole thing will blow over. Amy? 
friends stick together. Jamie, Hopsing fixed an extra special snack for you too. For glowing boy. Jamie. Jamie. Hopsing fixed special for you. Uh, I heard job singing. I'm just not hungry though. Thanks anyway. I eat myself. seen you miss that bad, Jamie. I didn't think I could. your hurry. Who, me? My hurry? Ray, Harley, over here. Oh, say, uh, you're, uh, you're Mr. Adams. Well, don't you remember me? Loomis. I was by your place last week looking for work. I remember you, Loomis. Put that knife of yours on the ground there. Well, what's this all for? 16-year-old boy missing since last night. Seen anyone like that? <laughs> Way out here? <laughs> no, sir. No, no, I ain't seen him. Is this your gray horse, mister? Oh, yeah. Uh, Heather. Yeah, oh, yeah. She's mine. There ain't no use uh, thinking I'm going to sell her, neither. <laughs> that little old gal and me been together since I come up from Arizona. Missing boy rode a horse. Spit an image of that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I found the horse. Well, I was fixing on bringing her in now, and that's the truth. It's Sonny's, all right. It's got his name on it. Oh, wait a, wait a minute, please. No, I, I found the horse. She was grazing, free. She had no rider. That's the truth. I mean, how'd I know you weren't going to steal that reward money right out from under me? I don't know anything, mister. Except a boy the age of my son is missing. And we're all praying we'll find him alive. 
Hey, suppose Sonny told his folks where he was going last night. I mean, he told me he had a rough time sneaking out. He told, don't you think we'd have known about it by now? Well, I think we should all get together and talk it over again. What would that do? We already decided we made a pact. He was at the ranch looking for work. Sonny's horse and saddle. All right, mister. I guess I'll have to hold you on suspicion. Now we gotta have another. Sonny, they'll let him go. We don't know for sure if we'd have to stand trial. Yeah, and even if we do, it doesn't mean they're going to haul us off to jail or anything. Oh, what makes you so sure about that? You just think what it sounds like. I was telling all about that hot poker and tying him to the stakes and Sonny crying out for us to let him go. Trust me. I've seen a lot more of the law than most. I just don't want to see us all get hurt. Maybe hurt real bad. For something we couldn't help. Neither one of you know what it's like to spend time in prison. Things that go on behind those walls. Ugly things. Worse than anything you ever imagined. At least let's wait another day, huh? I gotta get going on home. I got chores. Josh, the worst that can happen to that man is he'll get to sleep a night with a roof over his head. I gotta go. You won't say nothing? Not till we all decide. Jamie? Going on home? No, not yet. I'm going to Sheriff Coffee. Look, Ted, it's the only thing that makes any sense. I know I swore not to, but... Ted, what we're doing ain't right. Now, that's all I know. It figures. Well, come on, Ted, we're wrong. Can't you understand that? You talk about what it's like in jail, but it's okay to let an innocent man take our place. Forget it, Jamie Cartwright. I guess that's what happens when you're an heir to the biggest ranch in Nevada. But ain't it something how quick you forgot what it's like? You saw what happened to me yesterday. I got fired because I got a record. What's worse, I got nobody to back me up. I got no people. Ted, I know that. You go to coffee with the truth, and it's bye-bye butterfly for yours truly. They'll find out I'm the leader of the club, and they'll say, he done it. He made all the others go along with him. Ain't I told you not to hang around with a boy like that? A thief? A murderer? No, you're wrong, Ted. We'd never let a thing like that happen. You ain't never been all alone. You'd know better. How long do you think the others would keep their mouths shut if all they was protecting was me? No, that's not true, Ted. They're all your friends. Well, friends is one thing, and kin's another. Forget what you see in here and leave me alone. I got work to do. Ted. I'm not going to Sheriff Coffee, at least not now.
knew you was on my side. I knew I could trust you. I'd do the same for you. I really would. Yeah, I know you would, Ted. The only thing is, I'm a... still not sure that makes it right. Hey, Ted. Johnny Muller was a fine Christian boy, thoughtful of his mother, respectful of his father, loyal to his friends, as any of these fine young men gathered here would be the first to tell you. Yes, the Lord must have wanted this boy so badly, he saw fit to take him from us when we were just beginning to see the kind of man he was going to be. We ask you, O oh Lord, to bring peace to the hearts of those of us who knew and loved. Sunny Mullah. I'm gonna go unpunished. I don't promise you that. Nothing's gonna happen to that man. Nothing. I told you what Pa said. It won't go unpunished. Didn't you see the rope and the guns? Ron, your Paul ain't one to break the law. He was just saying what he felt because he knew how Sonny was your best friend and all. Heck, there haven't been a lynching around these parts since right after the war. Now you know that. They didn't mean lynching, Ted. But they're the men who'll be on a jury. They're going to have a trial right away. They're going to hang that man legal. They got no real evidence on that mule skinner. All they got is Sonny's horse. For all we know, the only reason he's in jail is for horse stealing. And that sure ain't our fault. Nothing's our fault. But still, Sonny's dead. Some man we don't even know might die, too. Cal, I know how you feel. But it just ain't so. Today or tomorrow, it'll be all over. It's never gonna be all over. Not until we tell. I say we go right now to Sheriff Coffee. All of us. Whatever happens, it's gotta be better than this. I say we vote. Whatever most of us want, that's what we do. Just so you all know, if we tell, there won't be no club anymore. We won't have any of this to come back to. We won't even be allowed to see each other except at school. Come on, let's get it over with. Yeah, let's vote. All right. All right, if that's what you want, we'll vote. Corky, you helped me start the club in the first place. I say we gotta tell. Jamie? I say we tell. My friend! Mr. Ponderosa Cartwright! Sitting pretty. Adopted legal and everything. Let me tell you things I never tell nobody. Nobody. All you had to do was vote against Helen. 
Well, what's Ted Holt to you, huh? What's Ted Holt to anybody? Doesn't matter, he made this club into something important. Some place where we can all be proud we belong to. Place where nobody bothered us. So what? His kind belongs in jail, right? Let go of me. Let him up. friend, Sheriff Coffey. We got nothing more to say. Oh, you figure to shoot me, do you? Well, go ahead. I haven't talked to the sheriff yet. Look, uh, I know you didn't mean it, Ted. Besides, you know as well as me, that thing wouldn't work. Oh, yeah? Of course, I didn't put any shells in it. Yeah, well, don't. I don't know where you found that old thing, but if you rest it up like it is, it's liable to blow your face off. I told you, the Major gave it to me. He carried it all through the war, and then right after Gettysburg... Ted, there wasn't any Major. Friends do more than just stick together. They don't lie. Where are you going? Friends. Look, Ted, I don't want you to go. None of the fellas do. Sure, you proved that. After you left, we didn't turn against you. We just... How about loaning me a few dollars? Just enough to get me started somewhere else. I don't have any money, Ted. I know how it looks to you. Well, figures. I expect I'll find somebody who'll part with some cash money if I ask him real nice. Look, Ted... Suppose they let that man go, like you said. You leave now, and somebody's gonna wonder why. They'll come looking for you. So what? As soon as you tell Coffee, they'll be after me anyway. Either way, I lose, same as always. At least with this, I got a chance. Yeah, of getting killed. Or really killing somebody. Look, Ted, after you left, we decided to wait one more day. You mean that? Like you said, we can't be your family, but we are your friends. We'll wait as long as we can. <laughs> you just watch. Everything's gonna work out just fine. Heck, if that old mule skinner ain't on his way by sunup, I'll eat my hat. I mean that. <laughs> I'm going to spend the night at the Chandler place. When we heard about the Mola boy, we decided to push on through. Could down here, you don't eat fun, you don't talk, you don't drink, you don't talk. Pa? I was hoping you'd come. What happened? Pa? 
Carl, we gotta get to town. And the prosecution will also prove that this Loomis, this itinerant drifter, hasn't worked a single day in his whole pitiful life. Brutally attacked Sonny Moira, tying his hands cruelly. And this vicious assault was only in the death of this poor, helpless boy. And all for the theft of a $50 pony and saddle. Gentlemen of the jury. Your Honor. Your Honor. We could see you privately in your chambers, Your Honor. I think we have some information which is very important about this case. Your Honor, I see no purpose. It's all right. Well, Ben, if you say it's important. Yes, sir, I think it is. Well, very well. This court will recess for five minutes. Very important information has just come to the attention of this court. Now, if the prosecuting attorney has no objection, I'm going to ask Jamie Cartwright to please come forward and take the stand. No objection, Your Honor. Go on, son. Stand over here, son. Now, raise your right hand. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, to help you God? I do. Come with me. Go sit over there. Jamie, you will just tell the court exactly what you told me in my chambers. Yes, sir. Well, to start with, that man didn't have anything to do with Sonny dying. Sonny died in the old Indian cave out towards Sumter Mesa. We were initiating him into the secret club of ours, and... Who? Who is this we? You trying to say my boy was murdered by his own friends? No, sir, it was an accident. Oh, well, I can't believe that. Who was the leader of this club? Who thought up this uh, initiation? Well? There was no leader. We were all in it together. Jamie's right. It was all of us. Corky, Cal, Billy, Shooter. We've been doing that same initiation for a long time. And nothing ever happened. Oh, don't, don't. No, Margaret. Now, our, our boy is killed, and they're trying to say it's some part of a crazy accident. Holland. Holland. Uh, I know what it means to lose a son. Now, isn't it possible that your boy could have had some a physical defect, a lungs, heart, something you didn't know anything about. Ben, Ben, look, even if that were true, that's not the issue here. Now, I know my son, and he could not have participated in such a thing unless he was intimidated by some member of that club. Ron, who was it, boy? I want his name. Pa, it was just like Jamie said. Honest, Mr. Lewis, it wasn't nothing that scary. Like Ron said, we all been through it. That stable boy, Hope, was he a member of this club? That was it. It was him, wasn't it? Wasn't it? The drifter kid that got fired for stealing by Corbin? Wasn't it? But it didn't mean nothing who was leader. Oh, don't you see? It's happening just like Ted said it would. They're, they're blaming him when it was all of us. Look, Pa, the rest of us, we, we got a family to stand up with us, but Ted's got nobody. Is that why you wouldn't talk? 
kill you like you did my son, unless you make me. You're going to answer to the law. You hear me, boy? I'm coming up, boy. Holland. This Holland. is your affair, Ben. It's everybody's affair. Now, look, you don't even know the boy's up there. Guilty always hides. Besides, where else would he go? I just buried one of my boys. This is wrong. Ted! Ted, it's all right. We told him. We told him how it was. Ted, if there's any blame at all, you've got just as much of it as we do. That's all, Ted, just as much as we do. Jamie. Ted, the gun will blow up! Drop that gun, boy. Get out of there! No, Mr. Mueller. It was all of us. Whatever's coming to Ted is coming to me, too. Go on, Jamie. It ain't no use. No, Ted! No, he's right. I ain't meant to be like regular folks. Ted! That's the way everybody wants it. That's the way it's gonna be. Put the gun down! Mr. Mueller! Harley, get your boy down from there. No. And the rest of you. He put him up to this. Nobody put us up to anything, Mr. Moeller. You want Ted, Mr. Moeller, you're gonna have to take us, too. We all done the same. Not my boy. My boy died. It was all our fault, Mr. Moeller. For treating Sonny just like one of us. We couldn't know. We're sorry. There just isn't any villain. You know that might make it easy for you to bear, but there just isn't any villain. Sonny was a good boy, Ben. He wasn't strong. Margaret and I... But you can't keep a boy down. Of course you can. That boy up there, if he... No, no. He didn't do anything to deserve this. Except be a boy just like the others.
Come on, hurry it up. Hurry it up. Where you want him? There. Him. What did you say? I said he was dying. You said I killed him. So I did. You never learn. You must like that hell box. You just earned five days in there, both of you. The kid didn't say anything. Mr. Heiser, the governor's committee's here in the warden's office. Into the kitchen, both of you. Mouth of yours nearly ripped everything. Your uh, first visit to a prison? Well, as a member of an investigating committee. Yes. You know nothing about prison work, and yet you're here on an investigating committee. Well, at the governor's request. Well, we have had our problems here, I admit that, but. Uh, Mr. Bannerman and Mr. Kirby here, they've served on other committees, and they know that there are no quick and easy answers. These men are sent here for punishment, Mr. Uh, Cartwright. They're thieves, highwaymen, murderers, harsh, cruel men. And when you're dealing with men like that, sometimes it takes harsh measures. I want you to keep that in mind. It's Mr. Heiser, my yard captain. When you're ready, gentlemen, You uh, won't like what you see. Too many prisoners, not enough room, and no money to do anything. Maybe we can do something about that. Uh. <laughs> the governor asked us specifically to recommend whatever changes we feel are necessary. Well, uh, I can give you two. More guards and better pay. Now, listen. You can talk to anybody, you can see anything you want, talk to any of the prisoners, but there's two rules. You stay close to me at all times, and you don't get within arm's length of any prisoner. It's more like caging animals than men. That's close. The big cell is like a lion pen, only these lions make their own claws. I'll show you in a minute. We run bed and body checks two or three times a week. So we try to surprise them, but somehow they always know when we're coming. <laughs> Save this for you. Found it this morning. But for every one we find, there's a dozen or two we don't. governor's office. Do what he wants, you get a raise in your salary. <laughs> Feed him. Thank you. Nice, fresh vegetables. Thank you. Yeah. Carrots, potatoes, Meat? Hmm, smells good. Inspection stew. My name for it. I've eaten the food several times. Not fancy, but good. You try, Mr. Cartwright? Just taste a bit. My name's Cooper. You don't know me. But I've seen you in Virginia City a couple of times. Hmm. You're a very good cook? Ought to be. 
Had a practice. Six years gone and 19 to go. Oh, yeah, sure. Recognize a few faces here, like uh, Johnny Plank, Idaho, and Burt Noon. Let me have a sample of that stew, too. Mm. Sure, nothing wrong with this stew. Waste, probably. Happens in every kitchen. Garbage. Would have been burned and thrown out, but the inspection got in the way. Who buys the food here? You'll have to ask the warden. Do that. Now, if you'd like to see the rest of the place, uh, gentlemen. about those stripes, they're not our work. He had them when he got here. All right. Oh, Mr. Heiser. Yes. What's this? So. The hell box, it's a 48 hours in there and they bury it. They're loud mouth, we got a lot of them in here. Doors open, take a look. Charlie. Then said the prison was built around him. It's his home now. He doesn't want to leave. Charlie. Yeah, Ch Charlie. <laughs> uh, keep your distance. Keep moving. Right. Not enough guards. That's why we have to move the work gangs in and out one at a time. This way, gentlemen. They're here. If we go. No bunch enough. Move. Cooper says go. Get ready. Doctor will be here tomorrow. Who needs attention now? This is a prison. The doctor comes twice a week. From what they tell me, that's all they can afford. We'll change that. We certainly shall. We've tried, Ben, two or three times. All right, chain up.
plan this so we get a better deal? You keep your hands off of him, you hear? He's the one that put me in here. Don't you try to settle an old grudge with him. Get Heiser and those other screws and put them in that hell box. And then? Them? They're going to help us get what we want. And what if they don't? And they're yours. Time for a beer. How's your trip? Long ride. I had to chase Barton all the way up in the high country to give him that money. Yeah, Pa's going to meet us for supper over at the hotel. He'll be earlier if the inspection doesn't take all day. It'll take me about an hour to get cleaned up. We got time for another beer, huh? Mm-hmm. Two? Two? Two sounds good. Two more beers! I'm sorry, we're closing up. That's the prison bell. There's trouble out there. How do you like my new outfit? Get yourself a new tailor. <laughs> gonna be all right. Gonna be. Ah. You like this? <laughs> right. What are you doing? Get out of that. Take a table and a couple of chairs and put them out there. I want every con in this place to hear every word that's being said. What about them? Cartwright stays with me. We don't need the other two. <laughs> Years. You're the only man up bother looking at the corners. So we're gonna tell you what we want. Well, I'm a member of the inspection commission, but <laughs> you sure can't speak for the governor. You can sign our demands. That is, if you think they're fair. Just so you'll know, I planned all this. I got me and the rest of them off the chains, out of the stocks. Quite right. All of us are carrying a load of years on our backs. Hard labor, chains, slop of food. And living thing outside these walls that ain't being treated better than we are. Most of us can't even hope to live long enough to serve our sentences and walk out of here free. A 
What do you expect of me? Just no lies. We played straight on both sides. Or a lot of folks might just get killed. The convicts control cell block two. Your father, Mr. Vanderman, Mr. Kirby are in there with them, along with three guards and my yard captain. Go ahead, Mr. Keller. Well, the convicts are loose in here in the main cell, in the kitchen, and in the guard room. Now, this door, three-inch plank, is the cork in the bottle. There's sliding iron bars that lock on both sides, and both sides are locked. There's no way they can get out. No way we can get in. Quiet down. Where's Griff? Where's that, Griff? Hey, Griff! Here he is. Where are you back, Griff? Donovan, I was trying to get him to eat some Here, that's some air from change. Donovan, six days in that hell box. He was sick and no doctor. Well, I already told you, I... I intend to tell the governor there should be a doctor here all the time. Well, don't you hurry, not for Donovan. He ain't hurting now. Huh? He's dead. Oh, yeah. No, no. Dead? You don't have a year to go. You make it. Griff, sit down. I'm gonna do some writing. To the governor. Demands from the prisoners. In cell box number two. Wait a minute. Donovan was in that hot box for six days? Why? Why? Because he couldn't swing a sledge. Heisel said he was dogging it. You put a strong man in there for four days, and they get so weak they had to carry him out. Right. Whoa. Donovan was sick when they put him in there. Right. No more hell box. No more whipping. Get, get up. Get, get up. Right. Now, what about our mail? Yeah. Yeah. We want our letters. And we want permission to write at least one letter a month. Don't you get your mail here? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> it comes here. Yeah, but we don't see it. All right. We want some... some soap. Yeah. And a place to wash our clothes. Yeah. And we want blankets that don't stink to high heaven. Yeah. 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 And write down food. We want the grub that the state pays for that we never get. You saying someone is stealing the ration money? I'm not going to say it. But I'll prove it. And maybe that'll open your eyes. Goggins, you figure it Get mine a minute. King of the whole world inside these walls. Well, how you like it now, Heiser? Huh? huh? How you like it now, huh? 35 cents a day per man for food. And what do we get? A dog couldn't eat. Well, the, the stew I tasted was pretty good. Yeah, so it was. Inspection day stew. How many times we get it? Four times in six years. You saw the rotten potatoes? The weevils in the flour? Yeah, I do. Tell him who buys the food. Ask the warden. We don't have to. We know already. But you're going to tell Cordray. right? Tell you nothing. You want to kill me and hang for it, go ahead. I, uh, I won't kill you. But I might just turn you over to the cons, the one that you worked over the whip. Yeah. yeah. Give me that yeah. pig. Good choice. Let's get it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I buy the food. Who you buy it from? Vanneman. Vanneman. Dirty. Get Vanneman. How thick are these walls right there? Two feet, a little better. Well, we could break through there. A crew of men with drills and sledges, rifles to cover, wouldn't take long. Just twice as long as it would take to kill the hostages. What if the prisoners broke through the wall here? 
they break through the wall into the yard, they'll be looking at this Gatling gun here and rifles in the back towers. Be a turkey shooting, they know it. The governor's in Virginia City. He's on his way here. I shall buy food from you. Well, I, I, I've done a little business with the prison, but, but not all of it. Not anywhere near all. All of it! Stop it! Stop it! Killing him ain't gonna fill your bellies. Maybe that's why Mr. Vanderman always made sure he came on his inspection to us. That's the door. Hey, Cooper! Yeah? There's somebody out here. Yeah. Two back in the hell box. And get back to your places. And keep it quiet. And you too. Three inches thick. Sliding bars, solid iron, same kind of lock on the other side. Hey! Who's out there? Cooper. Calhoun! What do you want? Calhoun? Got an arrow for you. Out of man's. Deliver for the governor. Might take a while. He was in Virginia City. He's on his way here. You better hurry. We don't do anything till we find out the hostages are alive. They're alive. Don't tell us, show us. Are you all right? I'm fine. Everybody's all right. You just do as they say. It's like cotton. So is mine. Thank you. I think you're beginning to see what I meant. What are they doing to us here? Now, one out of five will live long enough to serve a sentence. what we got. But Griff, he's different. What do you think another four years in this place is going to do to him? Hey, Griff. Tell the man why you're here. Hammered a man with a pick handle. <laughs> Did you kill him? I might have, but I got stopped. My stepdad, he liked to beat on people. He beat on me till I got tired of it. So to give you a gold medal. It was my legal father that put the law on his side. He put me in here. You want some more water? No, no, I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, I could use some in a dipper. We got hostages, we got the key to the gate, we got it all. And you're selling us out for the promise of grub we'll never get. Get out of my way. <laughs> Playing you stupid. <laughs> Let's 
who's next? Mail, letters, blankets. We want the grub that the state pays for that we never get? Lies! Accusations made by murderers. Not one word of truth. It can't be all lies. My father signed these demands. What they're asking for is reasonable. Food, blankets, soap, mail. Those men are prisoners. Here to be punished, not to be pampered. They get what they need. How long since you've been out there to look, Warden? Well... Answer him! Well, this administrator, my, my, my place is right here. Nothing they're asking for they shouldn't have had all along. Then I go with Calhoun. Give them what they want. You tell them now. You tell them now. I want my father out of there. All right. All right. Subject to the governor's approval. The hell with the governor. He's not here. You tell him now. Uh, you, you tell him, Calhoun. Who's out there? Calhoun. He's got somebody with him. Calhoun. Who's the other one? Joe Cartwright. Come to help you, Paul, huh? Forget it. We want the warden. He's busy. He sent me. Shake it in the shoes. That's why I sent you. The reason we're here is the demands. You're going to get what you want. <laughs> Cooper's demands. Forget them. No demands. Horses, guns, grub. You tell a warden, shaking or not, he's got to talk to me. Where's Cooper? <laughs> Forget him, too. Fifteen minutes. He better be standing where you're standing or we start killing hostages. I'll tell him. You do that. Cooper never even seen that night. Cooper didn't count. It was just a con. But if anything happens to one of those hostages, we'll all hang. That, that don't seem right. It's the law. I'll see what I can find out. Plank's running it now. Plank? Johnny Plank. He's in here for robbery, but he's a killer. Three states waiting for him with ropes. Him and that noon in Idaho. Would Cooper let him just take over like that? As long as he had a breath left. Then Cooper must be dead. And they got a killing against him now. They got nothing to lose. He wants to talk to you. He wants to kill me. That's what he wants to do. They got knives in there. They got men that can throw them. He says 15 minutes. You're there or he starts killing hostages. Do your heart good to look in that hot box. Everybody in there locked up tight. Sweat and blood. According to Mr. Cartwright's fine gold watch, the warden's got eight minutes to come front and center. Anybody out there yet? Whew. Well, it's on the back of the stove. Thought maybe you could use some. Kid, Cooper's friend. You wouldn't have any ideas about trying to get even, would you? Cooper's dead. He ain't the first friend I lost in here. 
Smart man's got to take care of himself. I just want to stay alive. And I want to get out of these walls. If you're lucky, you might make it. Pour the coffee. Got an extra cup. Is it all right if I give him some? <laughs> a hustler. Covers every bit. Go on, poor. I give him some muscle. He'll be needing it before long. We can blast that main door with dynamite. If the blast doesn't kill the hostages, the convicts will. If they were in the hell box here and the door was padlocked, the blast couldn't reach them, neither could the cons. We need somebody on the inside to make sure they get in there. Yeah. There's just six minutes left. Hey, wait a minute. Look, Plank said he was going to use one of the hostages as a shield. Now, why couldn't the warden use a prisoner as a shield? Me and you, huh? Well, it won't work. They saw you in there. You wouldn't live a minute. They didn't see me. Now, that might work. Not in those clothes. Well, they gave me some other clothes. Okay, there's something else we need. We need some kind of a diversion to get the prisoners away from the guard room. How about a riot in cell block one? Uh, they'd hear the noise. How do we manage that? I think I know how. Let's go. Just a minute. Prison clothes are not going to do it. The men in there don't trust anybody or believe in anything. You know, there's one thing I can do that might give you a chance, but you sure won't enjoy it. What is it? Heiser's favorite persuader. Whatever. Move, man. We're running out of time. No, what do you say? Nothing. Nobody. According to fine gold, watch it's time. One minute past. Maybe the warden's shaking too much to come save your hide. Let's go through it one more time. You can hear a racket in cell block one. A little while later, there'll be two shots. You start counting from there. 30 seconds later, I'm gonna blow that door. I'll be counting. Good luck. Let's go, Wood. You gotta come with him. Cut right on your feet. When you try anything and you're dead. No game, no rules. I'm giving you back all but six cons. Me and a five I take with me. We want 12 horses. Six for the hostages, you hear? I hear. Bring the horses in the back gate between the cell blocks. Six rifles, six handguns, and the guns better be loaded. Guns loaded. Yeah. Blankets, grub, ammo. No guards on the walls or in the towers. You got that? No guards. You got two hours. Two hours? I can't two get hours. to... Two hours! Get moving. What are you doing? What do you want? Please, 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 don't, don't stick me with that thing. Please, come they, they, they put me out of, out of cell block one to, to be a, a target in, in front of the warden, you know. In case you threw a knife or something, see? Keep talking. I want to get out of here. You guys are going out. Take me with you. You're Johnny Plank, ain't you? I'd be proud to ride with Johnny Plank. <laughs> what do you say? You're probably a plant. You don't look like a con to me. <laughs> or smell like one. I don't. <laughs> look at this. Still could be a plant. Your name Candy? Candy? Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know him, kid? Yeah. Up in Billings, Montana. And, uh, cell block one, he was there when I come in.
knocked him good. How's the straps? His dirt and his cuts and blood poison have been unwashed out. Something wrong with your head, kid? You want to take care of everybody? He helped me once. Keep your eye on him. And the door. Clank. All right, if I get some uh, water out of the bucket. One dipper, no more. Johnny, hey, you're going out of here. Take me with you. Why should I? I'm risking my neck to warn you. Cooper's friends, Clint and Andy, and a whole bunch of others are out there waiting just to kill you. You and Cooper, closer than fingers and a mitten. I'm looking at 18 years. I want out of here. What do you say? All right, deal. Four of us now. Need two more. Last time I saw you was just outside of Billings. Trying to wrestle a cow out of a snowdrift. It was a long time ago. What are you doing in here? Two to five. What are you doing here? I'm going to try to help these hostages escape. I need your help. I saved your neck. That's all you're going to get for me. Look, when I make my play, they're going to know I'm a plant. And they're going to know you're a liar. And I'm as good as dead. Okay, if you can't help me, just keep your mouth shut. All right? This is going to hurt. <clears throat> yeah. How fast a fuse is this? Foot and 30 seconds. I make it 15 seconds. Hour and five minutes gone. 55 minutes left. I'll be ready in just a minute. How long before you start the riot? 10 minutes, maybe 15. Make it 10. Sure. 
Just try to be helpful. I don't need you. Well, you back. Tell from the likes of you to put me here in the first place. Oh. Oh. Pity that it takes something like this to get the public's attention. Governor, the warden says everything's back to normal. I don't want it back to normal. If normal means that those men in there have to be treated like animals. Mr. Cartwright has been filling me in. Well, maybe we can make some of those much-needed changes now. Yes, and the first one's going to be to get a new warden. Yes, sir. I'll get back to work. Ben, I can't thank you enough. Yes, you can, Jim. You've already taken the first step by getting rid of the warden. Now, what about the prisoners' demands? Work. They need it, Jim. Work. In the fields, maybe. A check on graft. And you sure could use humane guards around here. And you could get them if you paid them a decent wage. If the legislators could spend two days in here... I know, Ben. My problem is to convince the public to care about men they'd rather forget. Governor, how we got the horses all set? Good. Candy, what did the doctor say about your back? Oh, uh, it's going to be all right. He said a couple of weeks off. I'll be good as new. A couple of weeks off? Well, Jim, what about, uh, what about Griff King? I don't know, Ben. What about him? Well, if he's put back into that cell, he's as good as dead. Well, I could parole him, but then I'd have to find someone who'd assume the responsibility. That shouldn't be too difficult. No, as a matter of fact, I already have someone in mind. Good. You. Well, don't worry about a thing. We, we can find another horse. Hmm? Come on. It's all yours, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. Want a grip? There you are. Not up. Thank you. He'll be back. They always come back.
Oh, <laughs> 